On a cloudy fall day, a Soviet Tu-95 bomber flies over the island Novaya Zimla, located in the Arctic Sea. Reaching a height of 35,000 feet, the pilot drops his ordnance. The Tsar Bomba, a 50 megaton nuclear bomb. Within moments, the fusion device detonates, shooting a flash of light through the atmosphere, visible from 600 miles away. It was, and remains, the largest nuclear detonation in history. It was originally designed to be 100 megatons. It very nearly killed the senior officer who was piloting the aircraft that dropped the test article. Capable of destroying everything within a 15-mile radius and delivering third-degree burns within a 64-mile radius, the Tsar Bomba remains the final word in total annihilation of an enemy target. Today, the Tsar Bomba is but a reminder of the Cold War arms race and the danger of an all-out nuclear war that would have likely caused the destruction of both the U.S. and Soviet Union, if not the world. Yet the threat of nuclear attack from our former adversary remains. The risk of accidental attack is more serious, I think, than most people uh, realize. The Russian maintain a large nuclear arsenal. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, they've had a huge economic setback. Their warning system has deteriorated terribly. There are gaps in their radars. Their satellites have broken down. The Russians, of course, reassure us that, no, we have nothing to worry about. But the consequences would be so grave that we should take it very, very seriously, even if it has a minuscule chance of happening at all. The threat of a nuclear attack from a rogue nation or a well-organized stateless group is also cause for grave concern. Whether North Korea has nuclear weapons isn't very much in the press today. Or should terrorists get their hands on sufficient nuclear materials, either to make a non-nuclear weapon, a radiological weapon, or to actually get a nuclear detonation, however small, would be a horrendous uh, attack. The evolution of precision guidance systems has eliminated the need for large-yield nuclear weapons like the Tsar Bomba. But make no mistake, the detonation of a one megaton nuclear bomb would yield more destructive power than any weapon the world has ever seen. Weapon, thermonuclear warhead. Yield one megaton surface blast. Energy released. Blast, 50%. Thermal radiation, 40%. Fallout, 10%. To comprehend the true lethality of a thermonuclear explosion requires an understanding of the massive amount of energy that's released upon detonation. When a thermonuclear bomb detonates, an instantaneous fission reaction creates a secondary fusion reaction, fusing hydrogen and its isotopes together to form helium, releasing enormous amounts of energy. And it occurs in a very small volume. Therefore, the total energy divided by the volume is very large. And that means the temperatures are stupendously high. Temperatures that are higher than the center of the sun. Upon detonation, a thermonuclear bomb emits a stream of X-rays, infrared rays, and gamma rays. This is referred to as thermal radiation and is visible to the naked eye in the form of a brilliant flash of light, lasting from one to 10 seconds. It emits all of this X-radiation that's absorbed by the air around it. The outside of the air is burning. It's forming basically smog. The nitrogen and the oxygen are reacting turns brown and so the light coming out actually goes down until that burns off and then it goes up again. The heat from the infrared rays will set people and buildings on fire. The x-rays will irradiate those closest to the explosion. The x-rays don't get very far. They're absorbed by the air. The air is then heated up by these x-rays to millions of degrees. 
The immense heat expands the air around the point of impact, creating a spherical shock wave and winds that can reach hundreds of miles per hour. And if it were a humid day, you would be able to see that shock wave running along the ground and through the air because it would cause instant condensation of moisture in the atmosphere and you'd see sort of a white ghost of a shock wave traveling through the air. The wind from the shock wave extinguishes the fires caused by the thermal radiation, but will flatten everything in its path within a radius of two miles. You get the expansion out, but then the thermal plume of the bomb is rising. A mushroom cloud is forming. And so you'll get a counter flow, which when air flows up, it sucks things in. And so you get a reversal of the flow as things flow back toward the detonation center and rise. A one megaton surface explosion will lift tons of soil up into the mushroom cloud, which will become irradiated and return as fallout. The heaviest fallout particles will rain down closest to ground zero. People exposed to this fallout will die in a matter of hours from acute radiation sickness. The smaller particles may travel thousands of miles, depending on wind velocity. If you ingest the material and it stays in your body, the long-term impact is that it can produce significant excess cancer of various sorts. The combination of thermal radiation, shockwave, and fallout could potentially kill millions, making the thermonuclear bomb easily the world's deadliest weapon. By 2004, the nuclear fraternity consisted of seven countries that had all detonated nuclear devices. Other countries were desperately working toward joining the family. Thus, there appears to be no end in sight to nuclear proliferation, and no end to the threat of attack from the world's deadliest weapon. According to the Center for Defense Information, there are approximately 30,000 intact nuclear warheads worldwide. All but 200 are retained by the United States and Russia. Deadliest weapons will return on Modern Marvels.